This is video 35 on MicroPython and LVGL9 on an ESP32. In this video, we introduce LVGL 9.2.2 on a recently built MicroPython firmware for ESP32. We learn how it compares to our legacy built LVGL 9.3 showcased in video 34. This is a two video mini series on ESP32. In part one, we presented the legacy built firmware, then set it up for the temp humidity program showcased in video 33. In part two, we use a new firmware build using the binding approach pioneered by Kevin Schlosser. His primary development occurs on the ESP32, but he intends for the development to support multiple platforms. Can this, should this, be the future for all LVGL MicroPython platforms? Please share your thoughts and ideas in the comments of the video. For this effort, the rig is using an ESP32 S3 N16R8 USB board inserted into a standard breadboard. And we are using the standard 2.4 inch ILI 9341 display. As this channel covers multiple small system solutions over time, please subscribe to stay informed and click like as that really helps. We have simple goals in mind for this effort. We hope to present the new binding approach, build the firmware, and set up demonstration programs. Finally, discuss the benefits of the approach. Let's begin with a demonstration of the Video 34 program using the same wiring but the newer firmware. On the screen, we are running the temp humidity program from Video 33. We will reset the program and restart it. As you can see, loading the screen and even display updates are fast. Let's look at the new binding approach that achieved this. Kevin Schlosser is the leader of the effort. His goal is an easier firmware build, and more, he foresees a common API on MicroPython to add more devices. We will look at the API in a minute. First, let's look at the build. The firmware used in the demo was built with this command. Below it are examples of the firmware builds for the Pico and for the Linux. On the next slide, Kevin Schlosser further explains that with this approach, MicroProthon is a dependency of the binding. The most impactful change is that data and device drivers are written in C, and so the displays are significantly faster. On the firmware, here are the modules. The screen is a bit overwhelming. Let's look at the next slide. Here I show the few examples of new modules. In the first column are the framework modules. But the rest of this video will concentrate on the LCD bus modules in the middle column and specifically the ILI9341 display and XBT2046 touch drivers. Here's the way Kevin Schlosser organizes the setup. First, you define a SPI bus. Then you integrate the SPI to an LCD bus. Next, you choose a display type and provide the data bus and signals. Finally, you define a touch device based on its data bus. The takeaway here is that execution is very fast because the drivers are C code baked into the firmware. There is very little in the flash. We, sh we shall see more next. Let's look at a simple LVGL code example, test slider LCD bus. Okay, we'll stop the program. and we'll switch to the test slider program.
we begin by looking at the imports. The imports include LCD bus, the ILI9341 display driver, and these init types that we'll talk about in a minute. Next is the touch driver. All of these are included in the firmware. We have our standard machine import, although the SPI device is defined differently than the, uh, our normal SPI. Finally, we have LVGL is LV and Task Handler. Task Handler is another module written in C that's on the firmware. We init the LV library. And next we have constants for our various different devices. Okay, here we define the SPI bus. Notice that we use host equals one. This is very similar to the fact that it's ID one, which makes it SPI two. And then we provide the signals. Okay, that's straightforward. Next, we use the LCD bus module and integrate the SPI bus mentioned above to create a display bus data device. And here we provide other LCD signals like the uh, data command signal and the CS signal. Next, we define the actual display using the ILI9341 driver. This is straightforward. We pass it the display bus that we created based on the SPI. We set the height and width. We pass it the control signal for the reset. And then a, further, a couple um, parameters for color. What's important here is that the ILI9341 is BGR, whereas another display like, say, the ST7796 we learned a few videos back is RGB. Okay, the nice thing about this device is it allows us to actually use a lot of commands that uh, normally we wouldn't be able to. So we can set the power, we can init. This init here is referring back to these init types for the LI, for the ILI9341 display. And most importantly, we can set the rotation. So we can easily change this or change it on the fly and it will flip the, the screen around. Uh, we'll, we'll look at that in a little bit. Finally, we define the touch driver. So the touch driver is going to use the same SPI bus as the display and we just pass it uh, a couple signals. Here we finalize the touch driver by setting it as an in-dev device. Then we have our, our normal LVGL commands as before. In this case, we've defined a slider and a label. Let's go ahead and run the program. Okay, you can see on the screen that we have a slider and the label for hello. So I can even touch the display, uh, although it's off slightly, so you, we do need to use the in-dev calibrate function to, to fix that. All right, let's try and use that rotation command. So we can simply change the rotation 
by entering in a MicroPython command. And bam, we've changed the rotation of the display. It's pretty fast. Okay, you get the idea. We can do the standard MicroPython thing and make changes to our screen using LVGL commands. The nice thing is, is because they're all written in C, they're very fast. In summary, in this video, we, we demonstrated the temp humidity program on the new firmware. We discussed the new binding approach goals and design. We discussed the modules and setup. We reviewed the test slider code example to understand how the modules are organized. Our impressions are that the display is significantly fast. The setup is organized nicely by the API. The touch does require calibration, but fortunately there is a, another uh, function that's on the uh, firmware which is called indev.calibrate. However, I am bothered that you cannot yet build a Pico firmware. Well, if you have need for an ESP32 S3 MicroPython firmware, then this may be your solution, because it's available now. For other platforms, we will watch and provide an update from time to time. I hope this was an interesting story about the LVGL MicroPython software. Thank you for listening.